have a motion and a second of Linda K. Robinson. Any other discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed to pass the Senate. Domestic violence board. Have a bio area appointment. Um, that's mine. Take care of that. Any other bios yet, Debbie? Yes. None? Okay. Down to uh, downtown airport advisory. Yes. Bob Walker. Mr. Chairman, I'll have to waive the rules. Nominate elect Bob Walker. Second. I have a motion and a second of Mr. Walker. Any discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Pass. Thank you. Fire Prevention and Protection Advisory Committee. A couple names for District 3 and 2. Submitted. You're going to hold off. You're going to hold? How about you, Mr. Mintz, going to hold off for 2? Um, that's David's appointment. Well, I see one for district. He, 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 he applied for that, but he does live in County Council District here, but it's a district three appointment. Okay. Gotcha. <coughs> All right. Poplar Springs. All the way to the rules and nominate Jeff Wagner for that position. Have a motion. Second. Second on Mr. Wagner. Any other discussion? <coughs> All in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Passes. Part of the advisory. There. BMS advisory committee. Thank you very much. Next item three, receive information, take desired action in reference to the EMS advisory committee. Catherine Hull, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I believe at the last meeting, council asked the staff to take a look at the EMS advisory committee, the history of this committee, and really more importantly, the future of this committee. As many of you are aware, the EMS Advisory Committee helped council with making decisions about how to best uh, integrate EMS operations and rescue squads when the county had a number of rescue squads. We're now down to two rescue squads that help our EMS service. The existing contracts that we have uh, in place and they renew on an annual basis with these two rescue squads seem to have ironed out all of the issues that the EMS Advisory Committee used to address. So in talking with the members of the EMS Advisory Committee and really the staff who's been involved in this process, I think we're all in agreement that our recommendation to council is that the EMS Advisory Committee truly has no items on their agenda. It really doesn't have the same purpose it used to. They're in agreement that if council felt that it was appropriate to disband the EMS Advisory Committee, that they would be in agreement with that. If it's council's will to do that, it can certainly bring back the agreements that would allow you to do that at your July meeting, work through the three meetings of public hearing of this ordinance to disband the EMS advisory committee. I think Councilman Paul may have asked us to put on hold any additional appointments to this committee until this matter has been resolved. Okay. So we're just going to wait until <coughs> July for if it's your pleasure, Councilman Paul will bring a, an ordinance amendment to you for your consideration at, at your July meeting that would uh, actually, in effect, eliminate the EMS advisory. Since you have this as an agenda item, I assume we could take a vote on that to have you move forward. Is that correct? Since it is an agenda item, just to ask you to bring the ordinance to us? Yes. That's fine. Okay. Do we have a motion to proceed? Motion. Do we have a second? Second. Now, any other discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Passes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Right. Next, we will move forward with our committees. No items under economic recruitment today. Today, we have a few things in the office. Public Health and Human Services, no items today. Personnel, finance, honorable Dale Covert, Chairman Jeff Horton, Jane Hall. Members, Mr. Covert. Mr. Chairman, we have several items coming before us today. And the first is, uh, receive information, take desired action in reference to accommodation tax advisory committee recommendations for the fiscal year 2013. Mr. Darrell Kosher, would you bring that to us? So, I think you guys have our recommendations in front of you. We determine our recommendations based on two criteria. Um, first, 
staying in hotels, which further builds the fund up in future years. And uh, tourism, I guess, is defined as people traveling 50 plus miles to an event. So based on those two criteria, we divvied up the funds as we feel um, meet that. Those two criteria. I guess, does anybody have any questions on recommendations? I do want to make a congratulations to you. I have noted that your son saved was recently crowned the South Carolina High School State Champion in the 3200 meter event. Uh, congratulations to your son, and I know you're a proud uh, dad. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Questions on this? Uh, we don't need to take a vote or anything, do we? We do. There is action. Okay. We've got and B. I'll make a motion. We proceed with A and refer it to full full council later. I have a motion to say? Second. All those in favor of the amendment raise the right hand. So I'm curious. Item B, receive information to take desired action in reference to a budget ordinance related to fiscal affairs of Fort Worth County make appropriations thereof levying taxes for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2012 and ending June 30, 2013 to provide for budget control to set appropriations for the Fort Worth County Council. Catherine Herbert is going to speak to us on this. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I had two specific items that I was asked to, to talk to you about. One is to kind of make a, a special note of a change in your budget policy, really just for your anticipation as we go into the new fiscal year. In the case of grants that the county applies for and receives, we have a slight modification to that process through the budget policy that would have any department who is applying for a grant on behalf of the county to bring that application to the appropriate committee so that you'll be aware that the grant application is being submitted and any possible <coughs> obligations that may be part of the grant award. For example, some grants require a match, some grants require the program to continue for a certain number of years after the award, and so on. So for those of you who are chairman of committees, with your indulgence, we will bring the grant applications to you prior to submission. Then when the grant awards, they will bring it back to committee so that council can accept the award. And if there's any change in the budget allocation for the grant as a result of the award, we'll make those changes through a budget amendment resolution later on at the same opportunity. The second item that I've been asked is to give some guidance to council with regard to the discussions of the General Assembly about the local government fund allocation. And as we've discussed, at this point in time, the General Assembly has not made an actual decision about what the local government fund allocation will be as part of their budget process, which places council in an awkward position of trying to anticipate revenue of which there's a, a wide range of possible additional allocations. We've heard numbers in the range of an additional 300000 to an additional $1.5 million. What I'd like to do is to offer you a suggestion for your third reading this evening. One way to approach this would be to amend the third reading of the budget ordinance to, uh, to anticipate the full amount if an additional $40 million were added to the local government fund in the state budget. The portion that would come to the county is around $1.5 million. There's a worksheet in front of you that, that details this if you, want, if you want to follow along. In the case of actually anticipating this revenue, you can amend the budget this evening to anticipate the full amount of the estimate of $1,531,000 and have a corresponding amendment on the expenditure side of your uh, budget approval to increase a non-departmental contingency account in the general fund for the same amount, $1,531,000. That would allow you to anticipate and encumber the revenue and the expenditure in your fiscal year 13 budget. At your July meeting, you can do a budget amendment resolution to make any adjustments as a result of the general assembly allocation and go ahead and allocate those funds more specifically to the priorities that we've discussed during the budget work session, such as software purchases, hardware purchases, and even additional personnel. You can also consider 
any salary adjustment timing that you may want to consider at that time once you have all that information at your disposal. Should we do that, start that procedure in committee or wait until later? I would think that the committee would want to make a recommendation to full council on amending the third reading of the budget. My recommendation is that you do increase the general fund revenue appropriations to reflect this additional anticipated revenue. This is making no obligation. All you're doing is positioning yourself to make this decision in July. If, in fact, you're looking at a salary increase in the form of a 2% cost of living adjustment, as you're aware, you have funds that are outside of the general fund. And I've been asked, what do you do to set up a contingency account for that um, salary allocation should you make that decision in July as well. And you'll see on your worksheet number two, we'll go through each one of those funds, the road maintenance fee fund, the stormwater management fund, the solid waste management fund, and so on. All of your special revenue funds. And you would make the necessary adjustments to increase their contingency accounts as well, so that that allocation can be made for salary adjustments at your next meeting or later. This just positions you to make that decision. You're not making the decision tonight. You're simply positioning the money where you can make that decision at an upcoming meeting. You notice there's three pages in front of you that have the corresponding changes in actual dollars that I'm discussing with you. One strategy would be to incorporate this as a staff recommendation in a motion and make these changes to the budget as a recommendation for your third reading later on this evening. And if the full amount of monies were received uh, from the state, the increase for salaries could be effective as early as one. If you're assuming that your meeting in July, on July the 16th, would be the time that council would take action on any type of salary adjustment, we would be positioning our human resources staff to make those adjustments effective in August. The first available pay period that we could make mechanically make those adjustments. Uh, can I have a type motion? Can we amend the third reading of the order? I'll, I'll make a motion. If we amend the third reading of the ordinance to reflect the possibility of additional revenues from the state and the corresponding uh, expenditures. Okay, no second. I second that. Is there any other questions? Any other questions? Those in favor of the no other raise your right hand. It carries. All right, the next item on our agenda is to render, receive information and take desired action in reference to a budget ordinance to establish capital project budgets for the year 2012 through 2013 budget year of the five year capital improvement plan. Captain, you're up on this one. Mr. Chairman, my recommendation is for council to proceed with third reading as recommended by the staff uh, to you during your budget work sessions, first reading and second reading. Right. Can I entertain a motion that we run the third reading? Motion. Second. second. Any questions? If you have no questions, I'll just clearly let it be done with the rest of the right hand. So it carries. Mr. Mr. Chairman, Chairman, that's all we have at this time, sure. Mr. Chairman, can I carry you back yes, you to item uh, 2 B, please? Yes, ma'am. Would it be the committee's recommendation to also consider staff recommendation number two on your handout that would increase the revenue and expenditure appropriations in all of your special revenue funds as well? That wasn't included in the original motion by the committee that you decided on. Jeff, you made that motion. Go ahead and move it. Second. All right. Do you need to be voted? Yes, please. Okay. All those in favor, let it be known by the raising of the right hand. So carries. Thank you, Mr. We do have uh, financial data and personnel basis reports in our package. Does anybody have any questions on that for we adjourn? Be none with Chairman, so we have this time, sir. Thank you, Mr. Colbert. No items under livability tonight. Public safety and judiciary. Honorable Michael Brown, Chairman. Jane Hall, Dale Colbert, members. Mr. Brown. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have two principal items coming before the committee. Both presentations be presented by the Honorable Hope Blackley, a clerk of court to present. The first one being the presentation regarding the Sparmer County Courthouse Emergency Response Evacuation and Security Plan. Madam Clerk. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 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 Thank you